countries around the world are investing in clean technology to raise fish in aquaculture farms to meet the growing demand for seafood. Aquaculture technology in Korea. Our news feature tonight with Kim Hye-sung. Yoon Jong-hwa manages a new aqua farm that opened on Korea's South Sea that cultivates Pacific white shrimp. He will take his first crop, one ton of five-month-old shrimp, to market across the country next week, the first time since the farm opened in June. The farm uses an advanced aqua farming method called BioFlock that purifies tank water as microorganisms that feed on fish waste like ammonia become food for shrimp when fully grown, meaning there is zero waste in the process. BioFlock technology makes our business lucrative and eco-friendly. The technology enables us to adjust the water temperature and reuse 99 percent of the water without using any antibiotics. We can cultivate shrimp any time of the year, and we produce 10 times more shrimp than other aqua farms of the same size. Aquaculture, the farming of fish under controlled conditions, has been used in Korea since the 1970s to raise marine plants. And in recent years, the government has invested in eco-friendly aqua farming technology like BioFlock to meet the growing demand for seafood. The ocean's marine resources are limited, and if people keep catching fish at the current rate, these resources will disappear by 2050. To manage a limited supply of fish and satisfy the growing demand for seafood, cultivating fish using aquaculture is the only answer. Here at the National Institute of Fisheries Science, eel, a favorite with Koreans, grow at a healthy rate in these round tanks. Researchers are inseminating the sperm with eggs to breed eel, and they say finding the right timing and feed are critical, which is why it takes decades to perfect the process. To speed things up, the institute has invested over 5 million U.S. dollars in eel aquaculture since 2008. Four years later, in 2012, they'd cultivated artificial eel eggs, and three years after that, they hatched their first glass eel, which produced its own eggs. Researchers are successfully breeding eel in a completely controlled environment here. Not only that, in terms of Polek, they also became the first in the world to do so. Polek has been absent from Korean waters for more than a decade due to overfishing and rising ocean temperatures. But Korean scientists have developed a feed that can survive in low temperatures, and for the first time, they raised a second generation of Polek this year. Korea has also begun exporting new technologies like BioFlock, and earlier this year, shrimps were raised in the middle of the Sahara Desert in Algeria using tap water. But experts say that for Korea to become a major player in the global aqua farming industry, greater investment and policy changes are needed. In Korea, fish farms are small operations with about three farmers each, which helps produce a diverse range of fish but makes mass production difficult. A change in the current aquaculture law, which bars conglomerates, is needed. For instance, Norway, which exports 10 billion U.S. dollars worth of seafood annually, or 20 times more than Korea, have companies leading seafood production. Norway, the world's largest exporter of salmon, has companies managing the entire value chain, reducing costs and maximizing benefits. Countries like Denmark or Japan are also investing in clean technologies like smart farming and equipment for high-quality mass production. That's why the institute is testing a remote control system called RAS, which is scheduled to be commercialized by 2019. The system lets people check temperatures, acidity levels and water circulation from afar, which could reduce labor costs and facilitate mass production. That's why the institute is testing a remote control system called RAS, which is scheduled to be commercialized by 2019. With the global population expected to reach 9 billion by 2050, the demand for protein is expected to grow by 70%. And the U.N. Food and Agriculture Organization has pointed to fish as a promising future source of protein. And to meet that demand, here in Korea, researchers are working to advance the technology so fish farmers can make the transition from catching fish to raising them. Kim Hye-sung, Arirang News.